the holder of us. In any city, in any country, go to any park close to you. Sit on the nearest bench you can find. Close your eyes and scream at the top of your lungs. I wish to see the holder of us. Don't trouble yourself with how people will react to your screams. For as you finish your sentence, you won't be in the realm of the living anymore. Slowly open your eyes. You'll find yourself on a circular glass floor about the size of a parking lot. The glass will be engraved with markings in languages you probably won't understand and pictures of beauty and hope. You will see no walls, but a void of endless darkness. You might catch glimpses of shadows with your peripheral vision, but don't trouble your mind. It's probably nothing. Do not wonder what lies in the darkness. Just appreciate the fact that you have solid ground under your feet. To your right, you'll find a glass staircase. Walk towards it with caution. As you start to ascend what will seem like an endless spiral staircase, screams, shouts, gasps, and other cries and sounds of agony and pain will reach your ears, getting louder with every step you take. If at any point the grotesque choir disappears, quickly scream out, We share the same fate, my children. Should the chanting remain silent, pray to any god you trust because the shadows you saw before with the corner of your eye might even exist after all. If, however, the sounds continue, you are good to go. Maintain a steady pace and climb the winding staircase until you reach a trap door. It will seem as if it's floating, but when you open it, you'll find yourself in an attic. Close the trap door and don't ever descend to the void. One visit is more than enough. Open the rotten wood door in front of you and you'll find yourself in a long corridor. The walls are often made out of wood, sometimes rusty iron and at times out of poker cards. Severed heads of once beautiful teenage boys and girls will be nailed to the walls all staring at you with eerie faces full of obvious insanity. You will immediately understand that their voices were the ones that echoed in your ears during your ascension. Their eyes, tongues and ears will be pierced with disformed pieces of glass. Dried blood will cover their entire face. You'd better start walking because it's not wise to let a single head look at you for too long. It might work up the courage to act, and trust me, you really don't want to know what a bodiless being is capable of. As you walk, pay attention to the heads. There should be a pole without a head somewhere at your left. Gather up any strength you have and force your forehead through the pole. The pain will sting, but you'll lose consciousness in a matter of seconds. If you want them to trust you, you must become one of them. After what will seem like days of sleeping, you'll wake up in a spherical room. You won't feel your body because you are now a bloody head on a pole. A meter in front of you will be a teenage girl crying and cutting her wrists with a razor. Ask a single question. Where will we stand when they come together? You should instantly feel the pole making its way through your brain and skull, while your head is lowered to meet the girl's gaze. However, if this doesn't happen and the girl looks up at you and smiles, they have decided that you're not trustworthy. Your destiny is to join the heads in the corridor, screaming and gasping for the rest of eternity. When her gaze meets yours, she will answer your question in a disturbingly detailed way, her sayings violently making their way through your mind, burning your sanity as they go. If your wits are still about you, as she finishes with a sob, she will grab the razor and inflict a deep, 
clean cut in her left wrist. Accept the bloodbath and the inhuman screams gladly, as this will be our fate one day. She will die, and you will faint. You should find yourself sitting on the bench. If the park is usually crowded, you'll notice many people staring at you in disgust, with expressions of pity and misery. Do what you will from this point forward, for we now trust you. The razor stuck in the grotesque wounds on your arm is object 994 of 2538. Fortunately, we don't love it as much as we value it. 